I would love to connect with you. We've got a tool for that. If you will grab your phone, your tablet, whatever smart device you have, and text the word CONNECT. Nothing else, just that simple word CONNECT to the phone number that's on your screen, 352-432-1075, and fill out our digital CONNECT card. It's even easier if you're right here in the room with us because in front of you there's a QR code on the seat back. Just aim your camera at that and it'll pop up. Let me ask everybody to fill out this connect card. We used to do it with pen and paper. Now we're doing it digitally to keep everyone safe. We'd like to know that you're here today. So go ahead even if you just give us your name, but you can also fill out a prayer request, ask about information about the church or a life group or discipleship, so many things. So that's a tool that you can use by either texting the word connect or using the QR code that's in front of you in the room. So thank you for connecting with us. We want to connect with you. We are excited today to have missionary Joe Tremontosi with Special Touch Ministries. He's coming in just a few moments uh, to share what God is doing through our missions giving around the world. Right now, we're going to bring the tithe to the Lord and offerings. Now, we know that missions giving is above our tithe and offering. Uh, so right now, let's get ready to give. Uh, you can do it in a variety of ways. Those of you that are in the room can drop it uh, in a bucket with an usher on your way out. You can use the kiosk. Anyone can use clfnewberry.org or mail it to the P.O. Box. So there's many ways to give, but there's only one attitude. That is cheerfulness. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So however you give today, thank you for your support. And let me pray for you right now. Father, thank you for this church family. Thank you for this body of Christ. Lord, we've been about missions for many years. We've been about your work for many years. And the interesting thing is we found that when we are uh, busy about your work, you take care of our business. And so, Lord, bless these, your people. Lord, wherever we're at today as we give, bring blessing and favor. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we cannot even contain. We give because we love you, and we give with a cheerful heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, wherever you're at, would you right now give a great big CLF Church welcome to our missionary guest, Joe Tremontosi. Praise the Lord. Do we have that video, guys? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
from Brazil. And uh, he, last time we were in Brazil, uh, about maybe four years ago, maybe three years ago, um, we were there at the invitation of Eli. And he had us speaking in 28 different churches in Brazil. And we have ministry going on there in Brazil, praise the Lord. But every time I hear that song, he wrote that song for us. And every time I hear it, my heart smiles because I know God is at work. He is at work. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for giving me this opportunity to share my heart this morning. And it's, I don't know, we were talking just earlier. It's been a while since I've been here at, at the church, and I'm so blessed to be here with you once again. And for those of you who are uh, relatively new or <laughs> haven't seen this face before and uh, don't know who we are, but uh, my wife, Ann, and my daughter, Beth Ann, who just happens to have disabilities, are Assemblies of God United States missionaries to persons with disabilities and their families, and we're part of the executive leadership team of Special Touch Ministry. Uh, and we thank you so very, very much for your faithful support of our work. You now, over the years, your support, your support, uh, has helped us minister to literally thousands and thousands of individuals with disabilities and their families, and hundreds upon hundreds have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their, their Lord and Savior, and it's because of your support and the other churches that support us as well. So thank you so very, very much. You know, our calling has not changed over the years. It's still the same. It's still to affect destiny in the lives of persons with all forms of disabilities across this country and into other parts of the world as well. Our primary work, though, is done by casting vision and by planting disability ministry within churches and other venues that allow us to do that. And we are so excited to be able to watch churches step up, step up and see what they are doing. It, it's so exciting to be able to see the church reach out to a people group or a subculture, if you will, that has been marginalized and disenfranchised for centuries, for centuries. I always like to share some quick facts, and I pray that one day, one day I will not need to share these facts any longer, but you know, there's over 50 million, well over 50 million people with disabilities in this country alone, and there's approximately one billion, with a B, around the world. Isn't that amazing? Nine out of ten marriages end in divorce when disability invades normalcy of family life. And pre-pandemic percentages state that almost 90% of those dear hearts with disabilities do not attend a church of any kind. They do not have a pastor to help them understand the greatest love story ever told. The vast majority of them do not know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, making them the largest unreached people group or subculture in this country and arguably around the world. You are involved with making a difference in that. And that is huge. And again, I say thank you. Again, I say thank you. Over the years, one of the many ways we would reach people with disabilities and share the love of Jesus Christ with them would be by having summer camps or retreats. We call them 
a special touch summer getaway. Last time I was here, I, I shared about the, the getaway that, uh, that we were going to be having later on during that summer, and I invited the church to come. And I, there are some people from this church, from your congregation, that came and served and loved on the people that, that I introduced them to. And they did an amazing job. And I thank you. I thank you so very much. We would have these week-long camps with our friends, and we would have a blast. We would have so much fun. Four and a half days of building relationship so that sometime during that week, their heart would be open to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. My wife, Anna, and I planted the Florida Special Touch Summer Getaway, but we also planted the Georgia Special Touch Summer Getaway Outreach. And we went back home to New England, if you haven't got the accent yet, and we planted the New England Special Touch Summer Getaway, and that's going really, really well. And uh, we also were involved in starting the North Carolina Special Touch Summer Getaway as well, and that was kind of cool. Um, and in fact, last year we were in the process of opening up the Alabama Special Touch Summer Getaway, and that was exciting and until the pandemic hit. Well, we had to cancel that. You know, every time I look at that, That's never happened to my wife and I <clears throat> over the years. First time that's happened. So my heart stops every time I see it. But we had to cancel that opening. In fact, every single outreach that we had last year was canceled, mainly because of the uh, population that we minister to. It was very susceptible. So, yeah, it, uh, it hit us. In fact, Pastor, quite frankly, I, I, my wife and I kind of went into a depression a little bit. It, it broke our heart. How are we going to minister to this people group, this subculture, when we can't touch them? We can't get near them. They're not. They're locked. They're still locked down, in uh, in their group homes. If they're living in group homes, they're still to this day locked down in group homes all across this nation. But then God prompted us. He's cool that way, isn't he? And I tell you what, our uh, spirit within us just skipped. When he prompted us that we needed to pivot like the church did, stand up and put on our big big boy and big girl pants and recognize the fact that God has this. Last year's theme was God's got your next. Well, if he's got our next, our next day, our next hour, our next minute, our next second, if he's got our next, and he's got that too. So I'll tell you what, in May, we went virtual. We created a virtual five-day special touch getaway camp. And uh, God placed some outstanding pastor friends and leaders uh, from around the country, and they came alongside us and praise God, the getaway was extremely successful. Very successful. In some ways, even more successful than our special touch getaway, when, uh, the hands-on getaway that, that, that we have. Because we were virtual, we were live on the Internet 
we were able to reach so many more people. Thousands upon thousands of people were watching as we had this live special touch getaway camp. And it was just amazing. In fact, we had our special touch friends in Brazil and in Ukraine watching and getting involved too. And that was amazing, where we have English and Portuguese and Ukrainian, is Ukrainian? <laughs> and they're all speaking, and it's just, it was, it was just so incredible, so incredible. What an impact it made. Lives were changed. Lives were changed. Again, I want to tell you, you had something to do about that. If it wasn't for your support, we'd be hard-pressed to do much of anything. Friends, it was awesome. Now this year, this year will be a little bit different than last year's. Why would we want to change something? Well, <laughs> we're not going to super change it, but because we've learned more about this virus that... Uh, that's been with us over the years now, or over this past year, we've decided that we are going to have four one-day camps around this, around the nation, but also we're going to have, we're going to be having it in, uh, in Florida. Four one-day getaways throughout the state of Florida, one in the northern section, one in the east central section, one in the east uh, excuse me, west central section and one in the southern Florida area. And we will also going to have a one day virtual special touch getaway going on as well. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about that, please see me at my table in the, in the foyer and I'd be glad to talk with you about it. And uh, you know, because we're going to be in four different areas of the, of the state, the potential for reaching more people will be greater, which translates to what? More salvations. And that's what it's all about, amen? That's what it's all about, more salvation. So please keep us in prayer in this regard as, as we go through that process of reaching hundreds, literally hundreds of secular disability uh, organizations around the state and letting them know that we are going to be having this one day camp that you can probably drive to within an hour and so uh, please keep that in prayer because we pray that uh, so many more people will come to Christ through it and uh, we can't wait to see our friends we haven't seen them in over a year, and uh, we just can't wait to see them. Even with that one-day camp, it'll be great. But for the sake of time, I can't show you all of them, but I can show you some. But I want to introduce you to Ben. There's Ben there, and my lovely wife, Annie, and I believe she's watching online this morning. Good morning, honey. But that's Ben. Ben comes from Georgia. Yeah, he's a Georgia peach. But he, he came, literally, he came looking for us when we had our very first special touch getaway in Sorrento, Florida back in 2007. At one of our evening services that year, in 2007, we, uh, Ben, the praise and worship was going on, and he was just crying. He was just, he's a wheelchair user, as you can see. He has cerebral palsy. But he turned to me. I was, I was sitting right behind him, and Annie was right next to me. And he turned to me and he said, please bring special touch ministry to my state of Georgia. 
And I said, wow, that's a great idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Wouldn't that be great? He was serious. Ben looked at me with his, his serious eyes, and he said, I'm serious. And I said, okay. Four years later, the Lord had us in Georgia. The Lord had us in Georgia. And we've been there ever since. Now we have a special touch getaway going on there as well. And it's so much fun. But Ben has been involved with us since the beginning in 2007. And now he attends the Church of God in Baxley, Georgia. And then there's Dan. Dan's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. Dan lives in Melbourne, Florida. He came to our Florida getaway about five years ago and accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior that year at the getaway at one of our evening services at the Florida getaway. And just so happens that our son, Matthew, uh, was his caregiver. And he accepted Christ when, when uh, Matthew uh, shared with him uh, Jesus. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ at that point. And, uh, yeah, we're proud of our boy. But Dan has been attending ever since. Not only does he go to the Florida camp, but he also goes to the Georgia camp. So he doesn't just go to one. He goes to two. And now he attends the Cornerstone Church in Palm Bay, Florida. And he goes there every Sunday and every Wednesday night. Then there's Sarah. Sweet little Sarah. Sarah is a joy. She came to the Florida getaway as well. It was about seven years ago. She was uh, very shy. And really, she kept her to, to herself uh, and all, but she was she was very shy, and um, at that time, that that year, our theme was called soaring, soaring. That was our theme that year, based on Isaiah 40, verses 30 through 31. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of our main speakers that year was Pastor Terry Howell of Living Waters Fellowship in Kissimmee, Florida. He brought with him that year uh, a special uh, event. He brought with him uh, this, this thing that he was uh, going to be having at a special event in the getaway. And that was remote-controlled miniature airplanes. Now, I don't know if you've ever flown a miniature airplane before, but it's really cool seeing them flying all around. Well, he brought a few a few of those, and uh, it was really cool, but Sarah got a chance to got a chance to play uh, and fly one of those planes. That evening, at the evening praise and worship service, Pastor Terry used that illustration of the remote controlled planes and our theme of soaring. And Sarah connected the dots. And she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. She now attends Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Just amazing what God is doing. I can't forget Johnny. Got to talk about Johnny. Where's Johnny? Oh, yeah, that other picture. You saw it? Did you saw Sarah? She was flying the plane. That was kind of cool. It was really good. But that's Johnny. Johnny's my friend from Connecticut. 
He, he attended our second getaway in New England and back in 2011. Johnny has autism and a type of Down syndrome called mosaic Down syndrome. And uh, again, at the end of uh, the evening service, Pastor Mike Tedder was speaking from his uh, from Decatur, Georgia, has a church in uh, in Decatur, and uh, he came to our getaway up in New England. Johnny came forward to the front of the auditorium and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior after Mike gave an amazing teaching on their level so that they with disabilities would understand the love of Jesus. And he gave that, that uh, salvation call and Johnny came forward. Pastor Mike gave a second call. He, he made a second salvation call and I know why now, but I didn't know why then. You see, in the back of the auditorium sat Johnny's mom. Nobody knew she was there except my wife, Ann, and I. And when Mike gave that second call, she stood to her feet and came forward and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. A mother accepting the Lord. It was an amazing thing to witness. And finally, there's Keith. Where's Keith? Hey, Keith. Uh, Keith comes from Palm Bay, Florida. And he has autism. <clears throat> he wouldn't. He doesn't look at you in, uh, when when you, he talks to you, or when we talk to him. He'll look over there, and you're over there, and and he's talking to you, but he's not looking at you. He's not going to. It's just not going to happen. But along with that, Keith has because of the autism. Um, you can't really get into Keith's space. You know, it's difficult to get in Keith's space, mainly because of the autism, and uh, you know, he'll he'll go off the deep end because of of the autism. But he's a great kid, just a great guy. He he goes to the Easter Seals um, work center in Palm Bay. That's the same place that my daughter Beth Ann goes to work during the day, uh, the Easter Seals camp in Palm Bay. And um, yeah, my, my daughter Beth Ann invited eight of her friends from Easter Seals to attend the Florida getaway. And uh, Keith was one of those eight. One evening at our praise and worship service, again, Mike Tedder was preaching that year at the Florida getaway. And Keith got it. Keith understood what Pastor Mike was saying and that God loves him beyond measure. Keith got it and he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior but there's something else you see Keith then walked up to my wife Ann and gave her a hug he allowed my wife Ann to get into his space. He worked through the autism. He worked through that very powerful thing. And he accepted Christ and, and he was able to work through it and embrace my wife Ann to say thank you. Yeah. Both Ann and I were shocked. We were shocked and so blessed at what the Lord has done 
for this young man with autism. Now, he still has autism, but he was able to work through some parts of it at that particular time. Oh, yeah, side, side note. The other seven that came to the, to the getaway at that time, there were eight that came. Keith was one. Seven others came. All seven accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and four of them were baptized in the lake that year. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. All glory and honor goes to him. And thank you. And thank you for your support. Those people accepted Christ and hundreds more. Hundreds more across this country. You know, we don't do this ministry alone. We don't. God has given us help for years to come. He brought us missionary associates. And some are career associates. There's Matt Espina. Now, Matt was here a couple of months ago. He spoke at the church about Special Touch Ministry, and he's doing an amazing work uh, at his church and sharing disability ministry within the churches. He's doing amazing. He's one of our missionary associates, and I'm proud to call him a friend. And then there's Lori Bullington. Uh, Lori is Anne and my sweetheart. She is just amazing. She's a wheelchair user, has muscular dystrophy, uh, has two other brothers that have passed away. Uh, her mother, her mother's a saint. She, has, she had three children. Every one of them had muscular dystrophy. Her two brothers passed away, and she is getting weaker. But um, she is a sweetheart. She's from the Jacksonville area. And then there's Charlene and Steve Phipps. Wonderful couple. Wonderful couple. They are running a, a special touch chapter in the Jacksonville area. And by the way, so isn't Laurie. At, with muscular dystrophy, she's heading up a special touch monthly chapter, which is a, uh, a, a meeting group for those with disabilities. Charlene and Steve Phipps are doing the same thing. Amazing couple. Wonderful, wonderful folks from the Jacksonville area. Then there's Todd and Sonovia Halbach. They're doing a fabulous work. They're going to churches all over this nation, sharing the need to reach people with disabilities and asking the church to get involved. They're doing a fabulous job. All of those people come from the state of Florida. Then there's Natamara and Ed Doak. They're newly added for our blind ministry. Special Touch Ministry has uh, taken up the blind ministry of the Assemblies of God that was uh, stationed in Springfield, Missouri, and now it is now in Wapaka, Wisconsin, where the, the uh, Special Touch National Office is, and Natamara and Ed Doak are heading that up. They are doing an amazing job, an amazing job heading up our blind ministry. And then there's Tommy and Cindy Mayer. Whoop, that's not the right one. No, back, another one. No, no, one more. Uh, no, that, those are the dokes. Let's try one more. No? Okay, that picture's not there. Nope, not that one. <laughs> Now they're, now they're all out of, out of whack, but that's okay, guys. It's not your fault. I might have messed up. It's okay. Cindy and Tommy Mayer. You can't see them up a picture, but I can see them in my mind. And let me paint a picture for you. Tommy and Cindy Mayer have been around since before Ann and I became part of Special Touch Ministry back in 2006. They were around as caregivers for a special touch ministry up in the Wisconsin area. They are amazing people. 
they take care of our tech. And Cindy Mayer is one of our, our teen leaders at the getaways. She's one of our leaders. She heads up uh, uh, caring for the caregivers. She is amazing, and so is in Tommy. And then there's Nilda Rivera. That's right. Woohoo! Nilda Rivera comes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She heads up a chapter in, uh, in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And you might be able to tell, Nilda is a wheelchair user. Amazing woman. Amazing woman. She's a great speaker also. Absolutely fabulous. They're all from the state of Wisconsin. And then there's Dwayne and Tracy Coral. Yes, from the state of Ohio. They're doing an amazing work in their church called Highway, Highway Temple, I think it is. And it's amazing. Pastor, um, pastor Gary, I can't remember his name, but he is the pastor there, and he was... Uh, the pastor at the, Ven at the Venice Church here in Florida, and he went to Ohio, doing an amazing work. Well, they go to his church. They go to his church. They're doing an amazing job at that church because they planted disability ministry there. And they have quite a few people that go to their ministry. But not only that, they're doing a special touch getaway in Ohio. And they're extremely successful going on in, in there. And then there's Rick Heights. Rick Heights comes from Montana, and he is starting up a special touch getaway in Montana. And then there's Lonnie and Janet, um, Lonnie and Janet Nance from Missouri. They're going to be starting a special touch getaway in southern Missouri. And they're also going to be starting um, a, a respite, I believe, for a special touch ministry as well, a respite ministry. Then there's Linda and Jim Dempsey from the great state of Texas. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen these people before, but they were world missionaries. And they retired from world missionary from um, world missions and became U.S. missionaries and came on board with us. They are absolutely amazing, where they're planting disability ministries within churches around the nation. Then there's Jen and Bill Kippen. You didn't know that there's that, that there were that many people involved in special touch ministry, huh? It was just me and Matt and some other guys. There's quite a few. And I pray that I'm expanding your mind in regard to the scope of what special tell what the Lord is doing through special touch ministry. There's Jen and Bill Kippen, great folks from southern from southern New Hampshire. They are starting a special touch chapter in in uh, in New Hampshire, and they are involved in the New England getaway. Fabulous folks. Jen Kippen does crafts for those with disabilities, one of the best in the nation. Just amazing. Then there's Mike and Kim Ferguson from the state of Massachusetts. They are heading up the New England getaway. They're the couple that we handed the New England getaway off when we planted it. Fabulous couple. Just amazing. Love God. Love those with disabilities. They started two chapters in Connecticut and in Massachusetts, and they are flourishing, meaning the, the chapters are flourishing. They are making an impact in that area of New England. It's because these people are getting support from churches in New England, and they're able to do this work. Friends, God has answered our prayers to send helpers. And he has, he has strategically placed them in different areas of the country. He is continually placing the need in the hearts and minds of those that he wants to use for his purpose. 
who knows? He may be touching your heart where he is saying, I want you to do something special. Listen to that prompting. Listen to it. You know, it's, it truly is exciting to see what God is doing, not only here in Florida, which is wonderful, but what he's doing throughout the country and in some places of the world as well. I still remember, Pastor, when I was hard-pressed to get a service. I still remember when it was difficult to get help and look what God is doing throughout the country and around the world as well. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do this year and for the years to come. It's exciting. And you know what? He's not done yet. Amen? He's not done with this ministry, and he's not done with you. He's not done with you. It makes no difference how old you are or where you come from, what your talent is, or anything. Because if he's going to use you, he will give you what you need. Amen? Amen. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share my heart today. And uh, I pray that you were able to see that you're doing quite a job of helping this amazing ministry that God has put before us. Bless you all, and thank you, Amen. Pastor. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. God bless you. You know, a lot of thoughts just come into my mind uh, when we have uh, missionaries, and I want to thank you, Joe, uh, for coming, and hello, Ann and Beth Ann. <laughs> God bless you guys. And, uh, you know, just several things just, just come to my mind. Uh, I was telling Joe that uh, CLF started being involved with missions giving when our church was three weeks old. Uh, we started the church in November of 1989, and within three weeks, we had adopted our first missionary, and we were supporting the Woodall family down in Honduras for $25 a month. I remember that. And throughout these uh, past 30 years uh, plus, God has blessed this church with an amazing ability to do amazing things. Uh, Joe and, and Ann and Beth Ann are just one of 43 missionaries that you support every month. Every month we send out uh, blessings to 43 missionaries. Uh, this year, we have focused on Mission U.S. Uh, back in August, we had our missions week, and most of the missionaries we had that week were uh, missionaries somewhere in the United States. And these guys are ministering in Florida as well as these other places in the country and now reaching in places like uh, Brazil and the Ukraine. So I'm excited that we are investing in special touch ministries. I'm excited that we are investing in, in 42 other missionary uh, ministries around the world. I'm also blessed by Beth Ann inviting those eight friends of hers to come to that camp. You think about that. Beth Ann's a wheelchair user uh, with special needs, and here she's going to work, and she's inviting people to come to uh, this event, and now those eight people know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's awesome. And you know what also just thrills me is to think about when those eight people get to heaven, you know what? They're not going to need a wheelchair anymore. They're not going to need any leg braces anymore. If they can't see, they'll be able to see. If they can't hear, they'll be able to hear. If they have anything going on that's hindering them now, you know what? When they get to heaven, all that's going to be gone. Amen? We're going to have that brand new body. We're going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Isn't that exciting to think about that? In uh, Luke chapter 15, Jesus does something that I can't find recorded anywhere else in Scripture, and that he basically 
tells three stories back to back to back all with the same theme he basically gives three illustrations three three parables and people love stories and we love seeing the pictures pictures of the 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 people that you're reaching pictures of the people that are connecting with you thank god for that and jesus tells these three stories uh, the first story is uh, about a lost sheep and uh, he tells a story about this shepherd who has a hundred sheep and you know the story if you've read the bible one of them gets lost he's got 99 safe back at home in the pen where they need to be but there's one lost and uh, the the shepherd says all right you 99 you're all right you'll be fine let me go find this one and so he goes out into the dark and the dangerous places and he finds that one and he, he brings that one back and he says let's have a party found my lost sheep. And then there's a story about a, a, a widow uh, with just 10 coins to her name. That's all she has. And, and uh, somehow in her house, she loses one of those coins. And Jesus tells a story that she cleans her house. She turns up every bit of furniture and sweeps it out, opens all the doors, turns on any light that she can find, trying to find this coin. And she searches, searches. Finally, she finds the lost coin. You know what she says? Let's have a party. Uh, the, I, I, I had 10 coins, lost one, found the one. And then there's the story of the prodigal son. Remember the guy had two sons and the one takes his inheritance and he runs off and he lives wild and does all these crazy things. He runs out of money. And he decides, man, I'd be better off back at home working for my dad than I'm out, than I'm out here begging on the streets, feeding pigs, stealing pig food. And so he goes home. And when he gets home, you know what the father does? He throws a party. So that story tells us that lost things matter to God. The lost coin mattered, the lost sheep mattered, the lost boy mattered to God. And I want you to know that people with special needs, all one billion of them around the world, matter to God. The second thing that those stories tell us is that not only do lost people matter to God, but also they're worthy of a search. The woman searched the house, the shepherd searched the countryside and even though the father we don't have any record of him leaving home I think you can infer that he was looking for his boy every day because the Bible says when his boy came home the father saw him from a far distance and that lets me know that dad was looking for him regularly so lost people matter to God and lost people are worthy of a search and I'm glad that you guys are, are searching out lost people people with disability that don't know Jesus and their families like that one young man's mother praise God that's awesome and then the third part of the story not only do lost people matter to God but lost people are worthy of a search when we find them there's a party there's a party all three of these stories end with a celebration I want you to know when somebody comes to know Jesus there's a celebration in heaven because Jesus said there is more rejoicing over the one loss that is found than over the 99 that are saved how many of you know every time one of these people with special needs one of their family members comes to Christ there's a party going on in heaven amen and you are supporting that you are partnering with that I don't know how many years we've been supporting special touch but it's been a good long while and I just want to thank you for sharing with us and I want you to know where your missions giving goes and this is just one example so every week uh, you have an offer opportunity to give uh, grab one of those blue envelopes in in front of you you'll notice right on there the top says the Lord's tithes I think it does uh, and then uh, right below it says missions all right if you you look at I didn't see one person lean forward I'm gonna try that again grab one of those blue envelopes in front there you go it's a long way it's six feet in front of you <laughs> some of you are like well, that's too far I got little alligator arms <laughs> can't reach it <laughs> only five people know that joke but anyway can't reach it right on top does it say the Lord's tithe on top I think it does tithe God's tithe yeah See, the tithe belongs to the Lord. God says, bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. God's tithe. When we bring that 10%, we say, God, I trust you with all of it. I bring the 10%. Lord, you own it all, and I trust you by bringing this 10%. And the Bible says, see if God will not open up the windows of heaven for you out of blessing. 
you can't even contain. So that's what the tithe is all about. And then right under that is missions. Is that right? In that blue envelope that you're now holding? <laughs> missions. Oh, I got them in front of me. I don't even have to ask y'all. Yeah, God's tithe right there on the top. And then below it says missions. So, tithe is not missions. Everybody say that. All right. They're two different things. Say, Pastor, seriously? <laughs> seriously? You're going to say that we should bring the first 10% and then give missions on top of it? Absolutely. Why? Because lost people matter to God. They are worthy of a search. And we want to throw a lot of parties in heaven. Amen? So I want to just invite you. Uh, every August we have our missions week. And some of you were here and some of you were not. And we gave you a chance to say, yeah, I'm going to be on board with missions this next year. And so I want to give you another chance to do that today. Maybe you weren't here in August. Maybe you're new since August. Maybe you started watching online or over in the Life Building since August. Uh, we give every month. We write checks every month to 43 missionaries. And we support them. And we say, we believe in what you're doing. And we only do that because you uh, are supporting that. So here's what I want to give you a chance today. We don't have any cards for you. You're going to have to do it digitally. I know some of you aren't yet comfortable with that, but it's easy to do. I'm going to put a phone number up on you. It's the same phone number you see every week. And here's what I want to encourage you to do right now is uh, take out your device. I want to see some people moving out there, but I want to see you moving at home, all right? I'm watching. Take out that device and... Just text very simply to that phone number, 352-432-1075, okay? If you're already giving to missions, would you go ahead and resend that so that we know that you're still on board with us, that you're still saying, yes, lost people matter to God, lost people matter to me. I want to be a part of the search, and I want to help throw some parties in heaven. So that's the number to text to, just the dollar amount, $25, $50, $100, whatever it is. And then whether you want to give it weekly or monthly, you say, well, is this a pledge? No, this is what we call a faith promise. And a faith promise puts the burden on God. That, a, a pledge is up to me. I pledge to do something. But a faith promise is up to God. When I make a faith promise, I say, as God enables me and as God provides for me, this is what I will do. And I'll tell you, I have seen God do it in our lives. Lynn and I can give you story after story. of when we made a faith promise, God came through in an amazing way. You say, Pastor, I've never heard you talk so much about giving. I don't talk about giving except when it comes to missions that much. Maybe uh, every year I'll do a little teaching on it. But I'll tell you what, when it comes to missions giving, I'm passionate about it because I believe it's about God's work and I believe it's about uh, doing what God calls us to do. It's worth it. It's an investment in eternity. It's an investment in souls. So just go ahead and do that if you would. I see lots of you with your phones. Thank you. Those of you that are home, you can participate with that. Those of you that are online, I've been reaching out and engaging with you more. This is a chance for you to get engaged in the mission of CLF Church. So would you go ahead and do that? We're going to sing a song. The worship team's going to come up. But I also want to invite you Wednesday night. This Wednesday night, we've got a brand new missionary uh, that's starting a, a chapter of InterVarsity at the University of Florida. How many of you know there are people at the University of Florida that need to know Jesus? All right? So I want to invite you this Wednesday night. Uh, to come to Activate. Activate is our young adult service under the leadership of Pastor uh, Joel and Sophie uh, Lancaster. It'll be in this room, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, led by the Activate leadership team. Uh, it's going to be a great service. So come back, would you? Come back on Wednesday night at 7 and be a part of this mission service. It's going to be their first mission service. We just launched Activate in October, and uh, it's going to be their very first mission service. And I pray that they're going to take on this missionary and start supporting him. That's my hope and prayer because I want Activate to be, to be blessed and be about uh, reaching people just as CLF on Sunday is. Amen? Come on, let's stand together and we're going to pray. Father, as we have just made these faith promises, we do it for your glory. We do it for your purpose. We do it because lost people matter to you. Therefore, lost people should matter to us that lost people are worthy of a search. Therefore, we're going to send Joe and Ann and Beth Ann Treman Tozzi out to search and other missionaries out to search all over the world to the University of Florida and different places, Brazil, Ukraine. People are going to go search for people that need to know Jesus. So, Lord, we just rededicate ourselves. We recommit, Lord, to being a part of what you're doing in missions. 
Bless Joe and Ann and Beth Ann. Bless Special Touch, all their associates. And help them continue to reach people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing this song, and if you still need a few minutes to make your faith promise, go ahead and, and do that, and then we'll wrap up. Bless you as you go.